Thank you everybody for joining us today. BHP is thrilled to be presenting this Q&A session for all of you. So I'm Marie Manilov and I am in the role of Principal Talent Acquisition Graduate. So what does that mean? It actually means I'm responsible for the recruitment of graduates and interns here in Australia. And I am based in Brisbane. So thank you very much for, for spending some time with us in the next 60 minutes. So who is BHP? Well, we're actually a leading global resources company and we actually extract and process minerals, oil and gas. And our key purpose really is to bring people and resources together so we can build a better world. And this really impacts each and every one of us. So if you could move to the next slide, that would be amazing. And it's just really showing here our key commodities that we actually have. We have copper, nickel, iron, carbon, also known as coal, and petroleum. So these are our main commodities and our asset portfolio is absolutely world-class. And again, one of our key reasons is not only around people, but really so we can continue to develop the world and help cities grow. So Sam, let's keep moving. Perfect. We are a global company. And um, as you may or may not know, hopefully you know a little bit about BHP, but we have many assets throughout Australia. We have key operations in Queensland, South Australia and WA, but we will get to that in a minute. But we have corporate offices throughout the world. We have large operations within Chile, um, Escondida, Pampa Norte. We have um, a head office in, patrol in um, Houston where we have petroleum. So we're very much a global organization. All of our marketing is done from our office in Singapore. Um, so really a diverse organization when it comes to people and locations. And we're really proud of the diversity that we actually have within BHP. So let's move to the next slide, please. So the majority of you here today are probably really interested to know a little bit about grad and intern opportunities. And this year we have a number of opportunities throughout Australia, but the majority of these opportunities will be based in Queensland for BMA and BMC, in South Australia for iron ore, and also in the West, Sorry, did I say iron ore? Though, so in South Australia, we have Olympic Dam, so predominantly copper. And then in the West, we actually have iron ore. So these are the main areas that we will be focused on. And we also have roles in the West and for Nickel West as well. So a lot of opportunities um, for grad and interns at the moment spread around Australia. And Sam, if we could just move to the next slide. Excellent. So who are we looking for and what sort of disciplines? Well, here at BHP, being such a large, diverse organisation, we are after people to join us from a variety of backgrounds, whether it's technology, engineering, we have an array of engineering positions, mining, mechanical, electrical, chemical processing, um, within the sciences, whether it's geology, chemistry, survey, health science, um, we have radiation roles, which is really interesting, which are based with an Olympic dam. Um, safety is the heart of everything that we do. So making sure that we have people who can really drive our safety message in form of coming from a safety background or a health background is really critical. And we also have um, business roles as well, what we refer to as functional positions and positions such as working within our commerce teams, um, finance, and different areas within the more functional areas um, of BHP. So many opportunities throughout Australia across many different disciplines and degrees. So if we could just move to the next slide. Okay, if you join us as an intern, it's a great experience where you'll come on board for about 10 to 12 weeks in November after your exams. And we're really after those students from second year through to their penultimate year to join us and have this opportunity. Um, one of the real positives is that if you do a great job, you can be invited back to have a second intern placement or you could be invited back to be a graduate if you're graduating in the right year. Um, just a big call out for both our intern and graduate opportunities. We do need to have working rights. It's really important. It's a global policy we have around when we're recruiting grads and interns. Um, but Sam, I will also ask you to move to the next one so we can talk a little bit about grads. 
Our grad program is 24 months. It's a great opportunity for those who are really wanting to kickstart their career. Um, the two years you're exposed to multiple different opportunities, both technically and professionally. And what we're really trying to do is really accelerate your learning the two years that you're a graduate with us. Now, please note that these roles are all permanent positions within BHP. As a graduate, this is a permanent position when you join us. But it's an exciting time because, you know, you get to meet lots of people from all around the world as you are a part of a global group. We'll just move to the next slide, Sam. Thank you. So here's a list of things that we are looking for in our um, grads and interns. We really want you to be curious. At this stage of your career, we want you to ask questions. It's really important and we want you to learn. Um, be open-minded to the opportunities that come your way and really get to know people. Be a collaborator, work with teams because nothing in BHP is done as an individual. We always work in teams. So let's move to the next one. Great. Well, timelines. Applications are now open. So if you haven't applied, we would love to see your application now. And you have until the 2nd of April, just before Easter. If you're an eligible candidate, you will automatically progress through to the video interview and online testing. If you haven't done a video interview before, it's not scary at all. So just, just get it done, it's super easy. Um, for those moving to the next stage, after the video interview and online testing, what will happen is you will have a conversation with our leaders and this is really just so they can get to know a little bit more about you, but most importantly, for you to ask questions about what it is like to work for BHP and learn more about us. We're looking at offers from about mid-June to July, and then as an intern, you'll do your medical in September, and then graduates start uh, do their medicals in October. And then our start date is late November for interns, and then usually about late Feb for our graduate cohort. So that is a little bit of information about BHP and our recruitment process and who we are and what we're looking for. But most importantly, I'm really delighted today to have four excellent BHP ambassadors on the call with me. And I would like to introduce all of them. Firstly, we have Jill Terry, we have Jonathan Regan, Rachel Fong and Claudio. Now, can I please start off by asking Jill just give an overview and introduction of who you are, and then I'll ask Jonathan, Rachel, and Claudio. Thanks so much, Sam. Thanks, Marie. Um, so I'm Jill Terry, and uh, in terms of my role, as you can see there, I'm Vice President of Technical Capability. And what does that mean? I'm, I'm really focused on building the capability of our technical professionals, particularly our geoscientists, our mining engineers, metallurgical engineers, surveyors, et cetera, um, for not just within BHP, but, um, but also the broader industry. Um, and my role also in involves um, liaison with uh, universities um, to ensure that uh, the teaching programs are aligned with what our needs are both now and also going forward um, into future years particularly because we're in a really changing world and we have you know we have all sorts of technologies that um, are landing you know, on a daily basis and we're applying the ones that are relevant to us. We know, for example, that in 10 years time, there'll be technologies available that we haven't even thought about yet. Um, so that's a really exciting time. Equally exciting is that we have a world um, focus on environmental management and also on social value. And, so we have the opportunity to mould that for, for the resources industry, but we have to have the right capabilities um, within our people to, um, to be able to do that. So that's, that's also super exciting. Um, so a little bit about me. Um, I started my career 37 years ago as I worked out today. Um, I'm a geologist by background and, um, and when I was at university I actually just took geology as a filler subject having not been very excited about it at school and um, with the right, again with the right teachers, um, I just loved it. 
if I had my time again, I would still choose the same career. I, I'm just really passionate about the resources industry. So I'm just really excited that you guys are, are dialing in to, um, to learn about um, BHP, but also what the resources industry is delivering for the world for, um, and for the future of people on the world. Um, so I've uh, worked as a geoscientist um, in Australia and also overseas in places like Papua New Guinea, um, in uh, Laos, in Southeast Asia, and then um, glo fully globally with BHP. I'm almost 15 years uh, with BHP. Um, I think uh, I'm... One of the things I love about the resources industry is that it is so diverse and you are always learning. And so if you're curious, um, to, to Marie's point before, if you're curious about, um, about many aspects of, of the resources industry, you're going to really, really enjoy um, the way forward um, with this industry. Um, I think you also need to be flexible in terms of your growth. So as I've already talked about, the way that the world's changing, your careers will change and you need to be adaptable. Um, but that's really exciting. It's, um, there are so many opportunities to start with a base career within a company such as BHP and, um, and then move into other areas that potentially you have yet to think about, but building constantly on your skills, deciding where you're really passionate and then moving into that space. So much opportunity um, with a global company to do that. Um, and I guess the last thing that I'll say is why have I, um, why have I really wanted to stay in the industry for, for the period of time that I have and will continue to do so? And for me, it's actually about resource stewardship. So we're very privileged to um, have uh, discovered and then have access to extract the resources that um, are available to us. But it is about, we're the conscience of those resources and it is about doing the absolute best that you can to um, extract the maximum from a resource whilst respecting the environmental and the social aspects of, of the, the locations that we work within and being really cognizant that we have to get it right um, because really you get one go at extracting a resource and, um, and we need to be thinking about what happens for subsequent generations. The last thing I'll say is that I have done all of that whilst raising uh, four children, and uh, they're all adults now. But um, it's been a it's been a great journey, and I'm very excited to think about the uh, the journeys that you're about to start. And I'll leave it there, Marie. Jill, you're a hard act to follow, but I'm Jonathan Regan, uh, mine planning manager at Cabell Ridge in Central Queensland. So underneath uh, BHP Mitsubishi Alliance, so a 50/50 joint venture between BHP and um, the, the company that most of you will know is Mitsubishi. They have a, a development arm which owns um, various resource, resources around the world. Um, so my planning manager here at Cavill, I have a team of about uh, 20 direct engineers um, and a wider team of uh, geologists, surveyors um, and various other technical roles. Um, I guess for me, BHP presents such a great opportunity to, to work um, I actually left and worked for the Japanese for a number of years and um, I come back for the opportunity that BHP offers in, on a number of fronts. And like Jill said, um, you, you, um, the, the breadth of opportunity, um, you certainly won't be pigeonholed inside of BHP. Um, from what I do to, to, to design and schedule a pit um, through to how you protect the environment, manage your um, relationships with the um, neighbours, we're right on the doorstep of Murrumbah here. So our, our social licence is, is fundamental to what we do. Um, but yeah, I've, I've worked overseas as well. Um, in my time with BHP, I've worked in South Africa um, and done a few things in South America uh, and Japan when I certainly was with the Japanese. Um, I won't take too much more time, but, but certainly keen on, on your questions, technical questions. Um, I do have a, a flexible work. Um, working life. I'm FIFO here. So I'm in Brisbane every weekend and um, up in central Queensland during the week. So uh, I feel it's a very good life. Uh, so I spent the weekend uh, at the beach and um, now I'm, I'm in the um, one of the biggest coal mines in the world. So you can't do much better than that. 
I'm calling in from Perth at the moment, so WA, um, currently a project lead um, in the WA projects team. So that team looks at mid to major projects in WA, so anything above 20 million. Um, at the moment, pretty lucky on a major project. Um, Jill, I think you're familiar with it, the Western Ridge Crusher project. <laughs> um, and uh, what that is, I suppose, is, is looking at developing whole new, um, whole new mine next to our Newman Township. Um, primarily, I look after um, technology and autonomy, um, heritage and biodiversity management and um, community social value. Um, we've got a whole, a whole team of people that, that look after the full project. Um, I guess my background is I actually studied commerce um, with a finance degree, but I started in the PHP grad program 2014, maybe, <laughs> um, in HR. I actually didn't know what HR stood for, um, <laughs> but they hired me anyway. <laughs> um, and I was in HR and finance uh, for about, um, sorry, I was in HR doing FIFO, then was in finance um, probably cumulatively about three years. Um, Decided to leave um, and was a consultant for a couple of years um, internationally, um, mostly in North and South America. And then I decided to come back to Australia and I couldn't stay away. So I, I rejoined uh, BHP only a couple of years ago. Uh, mostly was doing a lot of portfolio management and strategy until I moved into the projects team. So I guess for me, my experience thus far in, in BHP is um, it's really flexible. It's really easy to move around and they really play to both your strengths and your interests. Um, so I think I'm on my fourth or fifth department. Um, it's, it's been really, really good. Um, definitely love projects though. The good thing about projects, or I guess in general, is often at BHP, you get to work with so many different people. Um, so, uh, you know, the project I was on before, I was um, it was Minerals Australia wide. So I got to work in OD and in coal, um, as well as WA. Uh, but you also get to work with a bunch of people. I'm lucky enough, I get to work with the heritage specialists, the environmental specialists, um, so to network and to learn more about the business and then potentially if you're interested to then um, perhaps look at, at what you want to do. So if you're calling and you're in uni still or you're about to graduate and you have no idea what you're going to do, don't worry. <laughs> I still don't know. And it's been really fun. Um, and and to, to Jill's point, um, the world is changing and to be flexible and to be open is, is really important. Um, your career isn't always going to be linear. It's okay to take side steps um, as long as you get exposure to different things. And then it just kind of works out from there. So, um, yeah, I guess that's me. Some questions later. Hey, everyone. I'm Claudio. Um, so I'm a graduate mechanical engineer at Olympic Dam. Um, started a year ago now. I originally was an intern in 2018-2019 summer in the reliability team on surface. And then when I started my grad program, went into the um, mobile reliability team and now in the governance and tech bill stewardship team um, so i guess my experience so far has been amazing I get to see the mine end um, now i'm also at the process end the amount of variety that the hp can offer you through different rotations is just unbelievable the different teams you can go to um, different disciplines just you can do so much with it um, and yeah i uh, graduated middle of 2019 um, halfway through there and prior to that just did a bit of work with PLC company and um, digital twinning company and then came to BHP and yeah, been here for a year now and loving it so far. Well, thank you so much to all of our panel members for their introductions. Um, but Sam, I'm going to throw it over to you now as um, this is really the time for all of our participants to ask questions to our panel members. As you can see, they're really open and they're really willing to take your hard hitting questions right about now. So Sam, it's over to you. No worries. So yeah, this is the part um, that I'm sure you're all here for, the Q&A section of the event, which really excited. I've had a few emails already from a couple of grads, um, students sending through. So if you'd sent me an email, um, I'd suggest putting that, putting that question into the chat so we can also see it and then let us know if you're actually uh, happy to speak it out loud. Because as I said before, the team are really keen to hear from you, um, see your faces, uh, this is meant to be as much of a conversation as possible. Um, but I do see we've got one that's already come through. So maybe I'll, I'll ask this directly to you, um, Marie, on behalf of DPAC. Uh, are there any international opportunities for international students at BHP um, in the grad mm. program? No, unfortunately, it is a requirement that you have to be a, either an Australian permanent resident or an Australian citizen at the time of um, application. 
Yes, sure. Hi, everyone. Thanks for a fantastic presentation. I'm just wondering if you're taking any graduates from either marketing or communications in that department. I know you don't actively advertise it, but you say you take candidates from a broad range of backgrounds. So, yes, that's my question. Hi, it's Marie. Um, uh, unfortunately, at this point in time, I haven't had any requests for comms or for marketing at this point. But in saying that, it doesn't necessarily mean that that will not change. So we're still finalising the overall details from the business. But if you'd like to apply, please don't hesitate in doing so. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, sure. Um, so most of you have already touched on it. Um, I'm a final year environmental engineering student from WA. Um, regarding the moving around departments, because one thing I've heard a lot is that you usually get specialized so much that you don't get as a wide range of um, experience HP attack that is it like a growth strategy or is it um, just what your interests are or how, how do you move around really thank you Jill I may ask you if you wouldn't mind taking this question especially as capability really sits within um, your excellent remit and, and building it but overall yes we you can move around in BHP so Julie you okay with that yeah absolutely thank you um, so Juliet I think um, it's it's and this is something that I've said to my teams um, over, over the years and uh, in my career and that is it's really up to the individual to um, I guess work out what they're passionate about, where they would like their career to, career path to go. I always guide that you don't have just one single career pathway, but maybe you have a look at two or three different scenarios. And then you start, you communicate that you're interested in achieving, um, you know, a certain role. We actually have a career and capability framework that we assess our workforce or that actually you do it yourself, assess your capability against the current role that you're in. But then you also have the opportunity to, to think about what might my future role be? You can see what the capability requirements are for that role. And then you can start to position yourself yourself by building capability um, to, to head toward that role. But you can also think about locations. So for example, if you start off in, in iron ore and then you want to get experience in, um, in Queensland, in coal or in South Australia in, um, in, with Olympic Dam, um, it's really a case of stating what you're interested in and then will help to support you to to move and I can think of, of a number of um, examples of people who who have been in for example coal and wanted to get base metals experience who have just voiced that that request obviously you have to allow you know a year or so for things to to happen people need to understand what your requirements are and you move forward from there but yes absolutely it's um it's more than possible, but it is about you being proactive in terms of how you want to uh, orchestrate your career effectively. The opportunities are there. You've just got to um, be clear about where you want to go and, and when you want to do that. Jill, I might like build on, on what you just said, just um, on the back of having moved, moved a number of times and, and having, I guess, Australia experience. Um, I did exactly what Jill said. Um, obviously, I said that I started in HR and didn't know what it was, and I was really keen to explore um, explore finance because that's what my degree was. Um, I made it very known to my leaders after a couple months of me joining that that was something I wanted to do, and um, Jill, Jill kind of touched on it that um, you, you do have a development plan that you and your leader work towards, uh, and you monitor it. I know I monitor my monthly, and, and you kind of deep dive into it, you know, quarterly or, or half yearly and, and finance experience was always something something on my um, radar. Following that, um, after having HR and finance experience, um, it was less about roles and more about um, exposure. So I wanted to get exposure to how the business strategically planned, for example, and together with me and my leader, we found a role that, um, that would suit that. So leaders are to be, have a really good relationship with your leader and, and to have really good networks across the business um, really helps because, um, you know, at the end of the day, they'll be sad to let you go because I'm sure you'd be a great performer, but they're, they're definitely going to enable you to, to continue to grow and, and to explore your interests. Thank you very much. Yeah, I just had the question if, um, if New Zealand um, citizens are sort of eligible to apply for the Australian Graduate Program. Hi, it's Marie. Um, 
Oh, New Zealand citizens have Australian working rights. So, oh, sweet. All good. Awesome. I just, um, yeah, uh, well, I had um, another question um, that I just sort of put on the chat before. Um, so I come from a construction background and I always see um, like one of them um, who actually are one of your contractors and we also often see um, like my company winning work for BHP. So I was just wondering what the difference, what's the difference between the work of say like a mining services company and the work that BHP does like in the resources and commodity space? Interesting question. That's the, so as you probably saw in the introduction, we, we're the BHP uh, is the stewards of these major resources around the world. So where I am, uh, the uh, coal assets in central Queensland. So as, as a team here and as an engineer here, I'll generally look at the designing of the pit and the extraction of the coal to deliver to the to our customers and all the pieces in between that. Um, so a service company, which are our critical partners, whether that's uh, engineering, building things for us, establishing some of those um, uh, infrastructure enabling works around our sites, um, are just a partner in, in our uh, project to deliver those resources to the world. So I hope that answers that, Stan. Cool. Name. Um, I just wanted to know what kind of um, projects do mechanical engineering students get to work on um, just because I've been specifically working in like an acoustics and vibrations based field and I was kind of interested to explore this different side of mechanical engineering. Wanted to know whether they're mainly design based or whether there's some consultancy involved, whether there's communications involved, just stuff like that, or whether it's mainly site work. Just yeah, those things. <laughs> Basically, what does your role entail mainly as a grad in mechanical engineering? Uh, great question. Known a few mechanical engineers over the days, um, quite a few in the graduate program. So they'll work in the maintenance field, but um, also in the projects field. So it's varied. Um, so I, I like the idea of acoustics and vibration. I, I think about my blasting in the pit and some <laughs> of the interesting things that um, mechanical engineers could bring to, to some of the thoughts along those lines. But um, it, it's very, it's vast, the, the different options and, and what you could potentially work on as a mechanical engineer inside BHP. Okay, thank you. I might, I might just build on that as well. Um, just being in the projects department, uh, a lot of our um, engineering is actually not done in-house. We have a discipline engineering team that does all the technical reviews and we outsource a lot of the technical design. Um, my department is almost probably 50 or 60% mechanical engineers of some sort and... Um, they mostly play in the project management space when you get to the projects team. So um, liaising with the actual with the engineering firms, so the big, um, with the engineering service providers, uh, managing their schedule, the interface, um, helping the discipline engineers actually QA them technically. Uh, but then they also do a lot of project management things as well. So um, there's a mechanical engineer right now in my major project that is um, looking after like the earth sciences functions as well as processing infrastructure. So um, I guess in the project space, it's definitely less technical. Um, you get involved in them, but it's um, more about management. Right. Thanks, Rachel. And can I also just ask, Claudia, would you also like to contribute being our current graduate mechanical engineer on the call as well? If you would yeah. like to intern and as a grad, you've got some really awesome experience, which you can probably share. Yeah, so um, I guess going along the same lines, it's just such a massive variety and vast um range of things that you could be working on um say for reliability or maintenance um you could be creating strategies um looking at frequent breakdowns um i guess doing some recourse analysis um the governance and more technical team you can do evaluations you receive an engineering request um and we'll do an evaluation of that request and um a design um up to a certain point when it gets too large, it does go to an external um, engineering service provider and that's where you liaise and com communicate with them. Um, and then, yeah, as Rachel was saying, uh, MOPS is more project management um, and facilitation, but I believe it does still require some review of drawings and um, mechanical review as well. But it's just a whole range of equipment you can work on. You can work on the massive trucks to pumps to crushers to, you know, just a massive range of, things to work on it's um yeah it's sort of hard to give a one straight answer but yeah just fast fast range of stuff great thanks Claudia 
Hello everyone and thank you for the presentation. Um, I just want to ask you a bit simple because I'm a bit nervous because I had the long career break and then I just graduated from my MBA in December 2019 from UQ and because the COVID-19 2020 all the application be become stopped you know what I mean so my question is um, is it possible I can apply this graduate program with my background MBA? However, I got my bachelor degree in accounting once. And then uh, 10 years ago, I had the, my last role as a, was a supervisor of finance project telecommunication in Indonesia. And then the second question might be the same with someone named Ifana talking about, did you guys consider about the major at student? That's why I'm a bit nervous, you know what I mean? Because uh, I'm from Indonesia, migrant in Australia, and then already Australian citizenships. And then bit like um, if I apply for the experience management role, but I got a gap. I don't have the local experience in Australia because I have, uh, I, I have the career break because I look after my new family and I got back to study to upgrade my skill. And if I apply for the graduate job, I'm a bit worried about my age, you know what I mean? And then that's why a bit complicated. Yeah, please advise, maybe you can give me answer uh, correctly what I supposed to do and is it okay for you guys if I apply thank you firstly please apply so we're really after students who are finishing studying from really 2019 through to 2021 so um, if you would like to apply please put an application forward we'd love to see it um, I would also just say in regards to the experience that we have as a graduate um, even though the program will be the same for each graduate, your learning would be slightly different. I would imagine it would depend the area that you go in and, and your experience could probably be capitalised in different areas um, as you kind of proceed with the organisation. Um, but congratulations as well, going back and doing your MBA. I know it's yes. a lot of work. And yes, so thank you. That's great. Yes got the last question Mary uh, did you did you guys I mean did BHP has the program like uh, Deloitte or EY like a woman return to work or just only uh, like specialist for the career break I just want to know if BHP has the program or not however I already double check in your website I couldn't find in that one maybe just give some idea if BHP in the future making the program for the uh, woman or some one written to walk. What do you think, Mary? I'm sorry, you you broke up a little bit, but yes. all I would say is that our graduate program is really inclusive. Um, written to and work. really embrace you yes. know, looking after a gender balanced workforce, which is really important. I think the other important thing to really highlight is um, we've got some really amazing <laughs> leaders within our business. And and you know, I'm lucky enough like you are yes. to have and share their experience here. And I think, you know, when I think about what Jill says and the interesting career that Jill has had and she's raised four kids and I yes. think that we have women like Jill in our business who are excellent mentors and who really guide the way for um, managers, both male and female, throughout our business. So I hope that answers your question question yeah um but we have some really strong female leaders um at all levels of the organization from those who are just starting out as i said yeah. to, to jill um and also to jill's boss who is laura tyler um who reports directly into our ceo so we've got heaps of opportunities um for females absolutely and i just think that we're just starting to really unlock the capacity that we have within our business to have an even more of a diverse workforce okay thank you Mary I will uh, looking forward to apply then and then is my nervous you know I mean thank you so much time thank you um hey guys I'm a, from a petroleum civil structural background um here in Adelaide um and I've heard a few stories about civil grads moving into a mining engineering role um I was just wondering if this is common um, and also if there's any limitations if you move into, say, from a civil to a mining engineering role, but you don't have that background, you still, you know, work your way up kind of thing? 
the answer is yes, we absolutely will look at petroleum and civil engineers to go into mining roles. Um, but Jonathan, I'm going to throw it to you because this is your field of expertise around mining engineering. So I think you're in really safe hands with having yeah. someone awesome to answer this question for you. Samuel, great question. Um, some of my best engineers on the mine side are petroleum engineers and civil engineers. There's absolutely no limitation. Um, the way I describe it is it's an analytical brain. And so mm -hmm. that's what you bring. So um, that you have a, um, a major, that's great. Um, but you, you, if you're the right person with the right um, with the right analytical brain, you'll you'll certainly be very capable as a mining engineer. Beautiful. Thank you for that. Can I just jump in and add a little bit more to that? Because it's something that uh, that I've been working on in the technical capability space. And Sam, just um, it's it's an area that the industry is very aware of in terms of bridging between one degree and and then a profession. And we do talk quite frequently about chemical engineers moving into metallurgical engineering, civil engineers moving into mining engineering. So we've actually, through the Minerals Council of Australia, there is a series of half a dozen micro-credential units that are free to access uh, on the Curtin University edX um, site. And they're designed for people just like yourself who've got a, a, a related but different degree who are interested in moving into mining engineering. Mm -hmm. It could be um, quite useful for you to have again, free to access, quite, could be quite useful for you to have a look at some of those micro-credential programs so you can get a feel for yourself in terms of where are the areas that you'll, that you'll need to, I guess, um, close some gaps. And, uh, but there'll be areas that you're a lot stronger in as well because of your background. So just uh, some guidance there. Beautiful, thank you so much. Um, so I would just like to know, um, as a student, so I would like to know like um, like some tips regarding um, like uh, resumes and cover letters because I think we, uh, in terms of um, like, so, um, how do I say it, um, selections, I, I don't think we're given much um, tips regarding that. So I think it would be a great help um, for that, yeah. Sure, well, I can give you a good tip around your cover letter. So to apply for VHP, you don't need a cover letter. Mm -hmm. So it's not a part of the process so that's one less thing you'll have to worry about mm -hmm. um in your regards to your resume keep it succinct keep it simple keep it easy to read um people like to sometimes use really fancy fonts there's just no need we're just after the information which is on the paper um sometimes people like to put photos again there's really no need i'd be keeping it really simple for me, the most important thing and the opportunity that you really have to present who you are is when you're invited to do a video interview. It's your opportunity to shine, to put your personality forward um, and just do it in a way which best represents who you are. So I think that is a fantastic opportunity that you have within our process using the technology um, to do a video interview. Okay, absolutely. Thank you so much for that. Pleasure. Building off that, Marie, there's a couple of questions about like, the grades have much an impact in your recruitment process. Like, um, is there anything that you should do to stand out, grads? In regards to grades, um, we're not necessarily after those who are getting sevens all throughout. It's really around, um, for me, when I think about what makes a great grad, and Jonathan's touched on a part of this, this ability to be analytical. Um, but you need to be more than just analytical when you're coming on as a grad. Your ability to communicate and your ability to influence people and to engage an array of people, I think are the bits that really make a graduate stand out. And while we're here, I might also just ask um, both Jill and Jonathan just to comment on more of the, um, I'm going to use softer skills, what we have for our graduates and actually how important they are um, throughout your development journey. Yeah, so happy to um, give my input um, into, into that space. For me, when I'm looking for a new member of a team, I'm really looking at about 50% that, that would be in terms of the academic um, uh, achievements. But really importantly, the other piece is around what, what we call your soft skills. So your ability to work in a team with other team members, your ability to collaborate, your ability to think laterally, um, 
just you know to support others um, within the broader team because culture is really really important to us and so um, you know it's very hard if you have somebody who who just is off in a corner and they might be really great at what they do but they're not going to build or they're not going to deliver as much as they will if they're part of a, a broader team so I think um, I think that's really important. And in fact, I was thinking about the, the um, CV question as well, to be able to put in into uh, a CV, not just what you've done in terms of subjects and whatnot, but what have, you act, what have you achieved? What have you delivered? And that might just be that you've been, I don't know, you might've been babysitting. What was the outcome? What were the, what were the achievements um, that, that you delivered? Because that helps us to understand better about who you are as a person and how you'll fit into a team. Really, really important um, for us when we're considering um, people to join the organisation. Follow on, Jill. Um, in terms of soft so analytical skills, absolutely, we're engineers. Um, in terms of soft skills, uh, you work in a mine, you, I would say... Uh, at least 50% of your time is engaging with others. Um, soft direct influence, uh, uh, indirect and direct influence and, and listening. Um, we have a, a new system called uh, BHP operating system, which is really about serving the customer. And so to be able to serve the customer and you guys will have examples like Jill was saying of um, some of your jobs you've had, um, it's about listening. And so those soft skills around understanding what people want and being able to, to provide that as part of being a good engineer. And that all comes from um, a lot of those soft skills and communication ability. So how can you break into the resources industry? And happy for anyone to answer this question. Um, like particularly if you haven't got any formal experience, any specialist area, um, should be they be highlighting, Amanda and everyone else be highlighting transferable skills or, um, you know, What's it take to get into this, into this industry particularly? I will start off. What does it take to, to break in? Um, I, think, um, I think first we've got to be interested in the work. Um, and you, I am not an engineer, um, but I feel that the work that we do is really interesting. For me also, when I think about breaking in, um, I've been with BHP for a really long time, but... For me, it's really important that you are putting your hand up or working for an organisation where you're actually aligned to what it is doing. And we are a resources company, but we're a really strongly based values company. Um, we're really proud in our values. We're really proud around um, sustainability. So there's lots of really great things that I align to, even though I don't, I'm not an engineer. And that's why I keep referring back to my excellent colleagues here who have all the technical skills um, but for me, firstly, I would say make sure it's a company you want to join. It might not be us. It might be us. and We'd love for you to apply. Maybe also consider opportunities which are not and maybe slightly out of your comfort zone. Um, sometimes we get really carried away about when we look at perhaps an ad that we need to have all of the skills and all of the traits. Give it a go and apply. You never know how far you can go within a process it might be you might be the ideal person for that role and especially when we do consider that there are definitely skills which are transferable across um, we've already spoken about the ability for petroleum civil to come across to mining um, but I would say give it a shot um, even if it means that you have to start within a bit of a lower level within an organization as Rachel said earlier, your career these days is not linear. So that would be my advice. But again, I'll also ask for especially um, my panel members um, to really contribute about their thoughts around joining the resources. Oh, well, I'm happy to give a bit of history. It's, it, is a, it is really history. Um, I graduated from University of Melbourne with geology and I knew it was actually at a downturn in the industry time in the mid 80s. And uh, I knew that I actually needed to get to Western Australia to have an opportunity to work in the industry. I was 100% dedicated to do that. I drove to Adelaide, put myself in my car on the train and it was the days of typewriters. So I literally got the phone book and, uh, and actually 
typed um, just um, cold call letters to, I don't know, it was over 100, I think, um, resources companies. And that's actually how I got my first job. So um, it's sometimes you just have to be innovative. And if you're really, really serious about getting a start in the industry, work out a plan and put it into action and, uh, and, and show potential employers what you're made of, particularly in terms of how dedicated you are to working in the industry. Somebody, I guarantee you, somebody will give you a start. So hi everyone, um, I'm actually um, a penultimate year student. So I'm mainly going for the internship at this stage. So I've actually started my application, but I've seen that there aren't any like fields or places where we indicate our preferences into like which discipline we'd like to be considered for. And also, you know, as um, we aren't actually submitting a cover letter as well, we won't have that, um, you know, chance to actually indicate our preference. Um, another thing I'd like to add is because um, I, I'm personally um, a kind of like an interdisciplinary individual. So my formal education is in chemical engineering and biomedical science, but I'm also very, um, you know, I've done lots of independent learning in software as well as technology. So that's, you know, two different streams there. Um, one um, in engineering science and the other one more so technology. So, um, you know, I've done Telstra software engineering um, internship before, as well as doing lots of ma machine learning and mathematical modeling. So how do I go about, you know, indicating this, um, I guess, interest of mine to actually be considered for multiple, I guess, disciplines um, in this internship? When in your candidate profile is what we call it, and that's just a term that the system likes to call things, to be honest with you. So when you're doing your candidate profile you will see a bit in there called education and when you click on education you'll go plus add and there you'll be able to add multiple areas so I think um, just add the two that you're currently studying and really probably what will happen from there is that as you progress through the um, process if you do a video interview that will be fantastic and maybe really highlight that through that um, in cases such as yours, and I'll refer back to last year, you know, we've got some really great leaders. So if we had someone having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you, they will also highlight, hey, great person, let's see if we can find them a role within whichever your preferred area is. So um, I think the really great thing is that as you move toward, throughout the process, you have the ability just to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with one of our leaders and it's a really open dialogue. So I would encourage you, um, you know, if you progress to that stage to really use it to your best advantage to put forward what you're interested in, um, where you see that your career wants to go to, or, you know, I think sometimes it's okay to say, I'm still trying to experience different things so I can understand where I do want my career to go. Does that help you a little bit? Yeah, definitely. I just have another question as well, more so in terms of the working environment at BHP. So um, with the working environment at BHP, is it more um, an agile environment where you work in, you know, a team for a short while and once that project is kind of, um, you know, I guess in production or, you know, pretty much taken off, um, then you go on to another project with you know different team members or is it more so the traditional um type of working environment where you're if you're in this role you know you work with roughly the same people um until you have a role change so just wanting to get a i guess insight glimpse of what bhp i will start to answer this and then i will call on my excellent panel members to also further contribute um i would say that with BHP, there are always opportunities and there are always projects going on. We're an organisation that changes a lot. There is always a lot going on. So even if you are in a traditional team, for me, especially when you're starting out, look for the opportunities where you might want to put your hand up and say, I'll do a bit of, I'll be a part of that project. And, and if that means that you're giving 10%, 20% of your time working on a project, working with different people, I think that's a really fantastic way for you to build your experience and skill. It's also a really great opportunity for you to start to network and really start to build on your own internal um, network so you can reach out to people throughout the rest of your career journey. I've been with BHP for 10 years and 
let me tell you, those people that you get to know are really helpful, um, both domestically and also internationally. So that would be my advice, but I will definitely hand it over to my panel to also ask for their further contribution. Happy to go very briefly, Evangeline. Great, great series of questions. I think your, your experience is very interesting. I think uh, uh, that technology background is something that is a new world we're going into. So great. Um, so yeah, that, that's the exact conversation Maurice talking about. Hey, this is my experience. And you'll, you'll have a lot of people in BHP's ears pricking up at, at some of that um, interest, some of those interests you have. Um, in terms of groups being traditional, my team on site's a relative traditional team, but like um, Marie also said, they'll go off and do projects and, and do agile. I've done an agile project, a couple of agile projects over the last couple of years, a three week project, answer a question. And how interesting is that as an engineer, something really meaty to go and answer over a couple of weeks with a, a diverse group of others. Um, yeah, great opportunities to do that in BHP. So even just thinking about it excites me right now. So, yeah. I do have one question that's come through in a private chat for Claudio, uh, particularly. Um, it's just, a, it was from Taylor from before asking, you know, any tips you can give grads um, who are coming straight out of university into a grad role? Um, what are some things you'd love, wish you'd knew when you started um, you know, earlier? I guess just go in there with an open mind. Um, just go in there realising that, you know, coming out of uni, pretty much know nothing. Um, you're going into a real world environment, um, just take it all in. Um, I think if I was to go back in time, try, I spend quite a bit of time on tools. Um, if you if you make it there, try and really spend quite a bit of time on tools. I think the amount of experience you get from doing some hands-on work is just invaluable, um, working with the guys, uh, people on the floor. Um, and yeah, just keep, keep an open mind, keep your eyes open, keep learning. Um, if you find that it gets monotonous or um, that you're not learning something new every day, then it's probably time to change and go somewhere else and learn something new um, or to a different department, I mean. Um, but yeah, I, always eyes open, keep my mind open and that's it. Building on from that as well, can you tell us a little bit about a typical, you know, a day? I'm sure that no, no true day is exactly the same, but you can tell us, you know, what sort of stuff you're doing day to day. Um, anything that particularly you never would have thought you'd be working on, you know, straight out of the uni? Yeah, so I was um, looking after a project. We got um, filters on the trucks, DPF filters, um, which are worth about, $40,000 each. So I was working on a trial project with them, um, trying to trial um, different manufacturers and determine which one's the best one. And I was just handed over to me, my first rotation for me to look after and organize and all that worth quite a bit of money, especially to the suppliers. Um, so yeah, that was pretty shocking to me. And I was, <laughs> obviously that's still had the people there to um, back me up and ask questions and um, provide that support. But being able to give that, given that responsibility, um, and given work that is of importance and is making a difference um, was, yeah, fantastic. Hi, everyone. Thank you very much uh, for today. Um, I just wanted to ask, um, Evangeline um, asked this a little bit before, um, but really specifying what division you want to be in, that happens down the track when you're doing the interview. Is that right? Just to confirm. Um, so is your question around your preference for where you would like to yeah, yeah, progress. That's right. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's really a combination of um, we do need to sort of look at your your degree. Um, like they wouldn't like really. I've studied HR. You wouldn't put me in a mining engineer role at all um, for many reasons. Um, but we will look at your degree background to see if there is definitely an alignment with what the business requires. Now, there's definitely flexibility. Um, as we've spoken about when we're looking at things like civil um, and construction and all of those, we can definitely have flexibility with some of our engineering degrees, but you will need a base level understanding for some of the areas that you would move into. And that would be the same for technology as well. We've spoken a lot around about, you know, your analytical abilities and your ability to learn is really crucial to us, but you do need some base foundation um, of the area that you are going in um, but when I say base don't worry like we don't need to have a base foundation within mining because we've got well 
we're lucky enough today that we've got experts here on the phone on the call to talk about mining. So we can teach you all of that kind of stuff. You're in excellent hands um, once you get in, but you do need a base level within your degree. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Um, I just had a second question that a little bit uh, follows on from what you were just saying there. Um, I come from a chemistry uh, Japanese language background um, and I would like to um, go into, believe it or not, more the business corporate side of things. Um, yeah. Whilst I don't have the educational background in, in finance, uh, I've, similar to Evangeline again, I've had a lot of experience in, in financial roles and, and accounting in the corporate world. How does BHP uh, look at something like that? Um, again, with something that's not so much requiring technical capabilities like engineering, yeah. Uh, will I still be looked at um, yeah, for, for a marketing and sales role, perhaps where I can use my Japanese? Um, well, you know, unfortunately, or, all of our marketing. You did say before, yeah, sorry. Yeah, unfortunately, all of our marketing and sales is actually done in Singapore. Yeah. Um, but I think at this stage of your career, we probably don't have the opportunity to join in those type of roles. But I don't think that should ever exclude you from applying because there are different ways and there could be different backgrounds that we can look at to consider. One thing that we talk about a lot, which is more of a capability kind of word, is the word of competency. So there are certain things which, you know, we talk about you being curious. That's really important to us, your ability to be curious, to learn. Um, you've got to be resilient as well. That's a really important trait. Um, so it's not all technical but there are elements of your competencies which we consider when we are reviewing applications and most importantly a video interview so it might not be traditional but i would um see where it goes and put it down absolutely thank you very much that's okay do graduates have an opportunity to work in bhp's innovation center um and on top of that what particular technology spaces would you say are explored at this centre? Yeah, I can just touch on, I guess, e examples of what technology has worked on that I've observed in recent times. We're in technology, we're moving to cloud capability. So there's, there's a whole heap of work going on in that space. But we also have um, in, in within the um, innovation team, we're really looking again, this, this talks to the care of the environment, et cetera, in the future. Um, we're looking at innovative ways to extract uh, mineral resources. So what if you didn't actually physically have to mine? What if you could um, fracture rock and, uh, and, and turn uh, copper, for example, into a solution that you could extract um, so that you actually are leaving uh, you're leaving the the, uh, the the ore body effectively in situ, with the exception of taking out the uh, the metal of interest. Those sorts of um, of innovative um, ideas are absolutely uh, being worked on. There's just a couple, but. Um, it, often it's a case of actually coming up with a with a recommendation that gets assessed, and then if there's um, if there's a business case and there's merit, um, then then things move forward. So um, plenty of opportunity in that space. Uh, a couple of questions about the recruitment process that I think would be good to follow up to your email address, which I will put into the chat function for everyone. Um, so it's graduates at bhp.com. Um, so I've just put that into the chat function for everyone. So anything that wasn't covered today or anything a little bit more specific to your own circumstance, probably best to jump into that. Um, so yeah, I come from more of an analytical chemistry, organic chemistry type backgrounds. And yeah, I guess I always hear about engineering and all those types of roles, <laughs> like anything more chemistry related or more like analytical work, um, those kinds of opportunities are maybe present. So the answer is yes. Um, we have uh, in-house laboratories. So um, whether that's analysis of, of rock samples, whether that's analysis of environmental um, water samples, et cetera. Um, and that, that would um, work between mining groups or indeed we have environmental teams. Um, they, they would be the main, I think, applications of, of chemistry. Um, but within, we also have our low emission technology teams who 
also potentially um, would be reliant on uh, input to particular research, review of particular research opportunities and streams. So no, absolutely, there, there is a, a, a spectrum of, um, of opportunities, even with our geometallurgical teams, really trying to understand the relationship between mineralogy and chemistry. And uh, we do that very regularly on particularly our base metals um, or bodies. So no, lots of opportunities there. Well, thank you for that. I, I guess most of the stuff about the um, cross-skilling has been answered, but I was wondering about the, uh, more about training both as an intern graduate and also sort of upskilling both within the company and also like per se, like right now, what can I aim for as a potential to be accurate as new skills I can learn while I'm both a student, but also if I get a role at BHP, what can I aim for as new ways to learn and increase my capabilities, both technically and so forth? Yeah, so um, <clears throat> BHP offers plenty of training. I've got a training course coming up in a few weeks for um, pumps and valves, obviously that's mechanical related, but um, there is that, those technical opportunities for those kind of courses um, as they come up throughout the business. And also with your development plan, you'll be able to add in um, any trainings that you would like, even um, for soft skills as well. Say you want a um, public speaking training, you can talk to your line leader um, and get that included in your development plan. And then in terms of, um, I think you mentioned about um, post postgraduate studies or um, that kind of thing, that, that can be done as well um, through talking to a line leader and if it align, aligns with the business's needs as well. Um, but yeah, there's, there's plenty of opportunity for training and development. And I think BHP is pretty happy to, to develop us and get us to help them out a bit more. And as long as it aligns with the business, it's yeah, a lot of opportunity there. Uh, lovely, thank you. And I'm happy to jump in again, talking back to the our career and capability framework when an individual, and everyone needs to do it, when an individual assesses their capability against the role that they're in and they consider their capability against the career pathway that, um, that's their preferred choice, it will identify to them where their strengths are and indeed where their gaps are. And then the development plan really um, is, is uh, an outcome of a discussion with their um, line leader um, to understand what are the pieces of learning and experience that that individual needs to be able to step through their, their, their preferred career plan. So we, I guess we're always um, understanding where workforce needs extra help to build capability and then we're developing or indeed purchasing uh, learning programs that can support that theoretical learning but then the line leader of an individual also will support in terms of then um, basically practicing those skills that you learn in, um, in a, an academic um, environment so that you can say, yep, I learned this and now I've applied it and you learn from that and then you build. So lots of lots of opportunities in that area. Um, I would just like to add from a development point of view, really the world is your oyster. Our current CEO is an ex-grad. So I think it goes to show that if you're eager, if you're driven, the opportunity is really there to take your career from grad to CEO. So I think it depends on the individual because the opportunity is there. What's your favourite thing about working at BHB? Give us one, one sentence, um, wrap it up for everyone here. Uh, for me, it's flexibility and uh, diversity of experience. You know, it's uh, you get global exposure, and sure, we can't travel right now. But I've had some amazing experiences uh, working with different cultures, um, different people across different commodities, and and different career backgrounds. You can't beat that. That's that's really fun. For me, it's just a variety of work. Always learning something new. Always working on something new. Um, you go from Doing working on trucks one day to working on a pump or working on something completely different the next day. So I think it's just that variety of experiences we wouldn't get anywhere else. Um, that's yeah, that's definitely my favorite thing. Um, for me, it's around the flexibility, the experience, um, and finally, and most importantly, probably the people um, within your team across your 
wider teams across Australia, across the globe. Um, I find the people is really what makes it. And, you know, along the way too, um, I just want to highlight too that what we do is really important, but there is laughter and there is fun involved as we go along the way as well. So, um, yeah, there are good times we have. Awesome. Well, I think that we'll wrap it up there, um, everyone. Thanks so much to the BHP team, um, Jill, Claudio, Marie, of course, on the call, and Jonathan and Rachel from earlier too. Um, thanks to everyone for your time and sticking a little bit past as well. I'm sure everyone's very busy at the moment from grad school out through to um, Jill and the team at BHP. So, you know, a bit of a reminder from right from the start, applications are open right now. So make sure you get them in thick and fast. Uh, I'm sure, you know, don't leave it to the last minute as well. Get them in as, as soon as possible because uh, they're open until the 2nd of April. Um, but yeah, I think we might call it quits there. Make, if any other questions, the emails in the chat function, graduates at bhp.com, send them through to there. Um, and yeah, thanks to everyone and enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. <laughs>